This is Zachary Horn with Clean Code Studio. Clean code, clean life. Today, let's learn some solid principles. Single responsibility is going to be our first principle. The single responsibility principle states that a class should have one and only one responsibility. This means that a class should be responsible for a single task and that a class should only depend on one part or section of the business. Guys, so to get to our example, all we're going to do is we're going to set up the simple user class. The user has a name, an email, a constructor, a format JSON method, and a validate method. As it is set up currently, we are breaking the single responsibility principle. So to show you an example, first thing I want to show you is that we are getting our data from our request query, just through our request query right there. So if we go here, and let me close out all of these extra tabs. Let's go reload our page. La la. And we're just saying we're just passing our data through our query to keep things simple. Okay. So after we get our request query data, all we do is we pass that data to our new user that sets this name and this email based on name and email from our query data. Next, we validate our user. And so when we validate our user, all we're saying is if this data, query data, does not have the name property, throw a new exception. If this data does not have the email property, throw a new exception. So we're validating it. And the third thing we're doing is we're returning um, the user formatted to JSON. So if we reload our page one more time, you'll see that it's formatted to JSON. And it was already JSON because I have that extension, but now we can see that it's actually like a string version of that JSON. Um, so we are actually doing three things here, three entire things within our user. So our user is a model. We should be modeling the user. It should have name, email, and reference any relationships it has. Our user doesn't have any relationships, so literally we shouldn't have any of these here. So step one, let's just bring this class up here. I'm going to call this the JSON class. And later when we get to dependency and version, we'll actually talk about interfaces, how to do this even better. But for now, we'll focus on single responsibility. The single responsibility of the JSON class is to take JSON from a specific array of data and JSON encode that data. It has one responsibility, that's all it does. So if we go down here and we do JSON, because it's static, we can do from, and then we can do data, just like that. So now we can go up here, we can reload our page. We get the exact same thing. So now if we remove that class, or sorry, not that class, if we remove the format JSON method, now our user model only has two responsibilities. Creating and modeling the user, its primary responsibility, and the validation method. So our user class should not be validating the request data. That's not its responsibility. So let's go down here. I made this other class, and this is a very simplistic um, request validation class. Very simplistic. And again, all we did is we set rules. We said, okay, we have to have name. We have to have email. The type of the name property on a user request or the user request data needs to be string. The type on the email for the user request data needs to also be string. Then we create this public static function validate. The Okay, so all we're doing here is we are running this validate, which is static, on our request data. And so to run that, all we need to do is get our data equals request query, user request validate data. Now, if our data does not pass validation, we'll never get to the point where we create a new user. It will automatically, automatically throw that error. So now the responsibility for validating our user request is within the user request class. The responsibility for modeling the user is, of course, within the user class. The responsibility for formatting JSON from the user object is in our JSON class. So our user class that had three responsibilities, well, we've now just partitioned that out and created three classes that are each 
separately responsible for a single thing. Um, so guys, this thing, this is huge. Uh, for example, if we wanted to create like a new class and we wanted to call it uh, class truck and then we add like public wheels and then etc etc well what if we want to format that to JSON too so we do return JSON from truck instead and so now JSON because that's a single responsibility it is responsible for formatting things to JSON get JSON from a given source of data whether that's an array or an object um, so that's single responsibility guys on the software side Let's talk about the business side of single responsibility. So the business side says a class should only change based on one business entity. So let's imagine you work at YouTube and you create this really cool reporting software. Then all of a sudden your executive from way high up says, hey, we need more reports on client interaction. You're responsible for changing that. But then two minutes later, HR gives you a call and says, hey, this is HR. We need more reporting on employee morale well uh, guys i'm sorry to tell you we just broke the single responsibility principle single responsibility does not only apply to software within software within software dependencies we are taking our principles to the next level the single responsibility principle takes into account what we depend on outside the scope of software the whole point of the Agile Manifesto and of Agile Principles is combining good software principles with good business principles. If we have to change our software or our code based on two separate business entities, whether that be a high up executive and HR, then we have broken the single responsibility principle. So guys, that's it on the single responsibility principle. Hope that helped out. If, you, uh, if this was helpful, like and subscribe. And Next, we will get on to the open-closed principle. So